does anyone does anyone actually want HS2? Uh, this is my question. Does anyone actually want HS2? We've now got a budget that's up to fifty billion pounds. That includes fourteen billion pounds of sort of contingency money. That'll be spent. Just in case you're wondering, that will be spent. Um, there has never been any government project that's come close to being uh, on on budget. Uh, and, and anyone tells you the Olympics, remind them that it ended up costing roughly four or five times what they originally said it would cost. So, so if you keep upping the budget, then it comes in on budget. But if you go with the original budget, nah, never going to happen. There seems to be very little economic case for it. The economic case being given for it, similar to the economic case given for the Channel Tunnel. Never made any money. Lost billions. Lost billions. Love it, but let's not pretend it's economically efficient. There appears to be no demand for it. 55% of the public oppose it. <sighs> That's nothing compared to the people who live anywhere near the line whose homes are going to be affected. And by the way, that includes a whole swathe of London and the South East. Um, there's far more demand for far, far cheaper options like joining up the cities in the Midlands and the North with, with cross-rail links that actually go east to west, uh, making it quicker for you to get between cities uh, um, in the Midlands and the North rather than getting to London. The biggest beneficiary after all will be London. So here's my question. Does anyone actually want HS2 other than the Transport Secretary and this guy Sir David Higgins, the latest chairman of HS2? I think it's a huge, huge waste of money on something we don't need that will end up costing far more even than the 50 billion that's been allowed for it and will do absolutely nothing for the economy of this country. It's not just this. You often will think of this as a story that's an outside London story. It's not. This affects whole swathes of, of, of Camden and, and, and lots of lots of parts of, a, of, of northwest London going right out, right out through across the country. Let's talk to a couple of experts on both sides of the story. First up, Frank Dobson, the Labour MP for Hoban and St Pancras, and also Robbie Owen, who's Head of Infrastructure, Planning and Government Affairs at Pinsent Mason Solicitors, whose clients support HS2. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Um, first up, uh, can I talk to you, Robbie? Um, you're, you represent uh, clients who do support HS2. Who are they and why do they think this is a good idea? Well, yes, good afternoon, Julia. Um, yes, we, we represent a number of um, uh, local authorities, uh, other public bodies, uh, landowners, businesses uh, and tra transport operators uh, who all have a slightly different position on, on HS2, but um, uh, in principle they, they, they all support it and um, um, can, can see that... Uh, yeah, if we want to compete in the global marketplace nowadays, uh, we've got to have infrastructure fit for the 21st century. And um, uh, as Sir David Higgins said in his report, uh, currently uh, much of our infrastructure is really a series of imperfect compromises. Um, and, and, and I actually think his report is the best articulation of the case for HS2 I've seen since the project started. Are you saying there's actually going to be a huge economic benefit that is going to dwarf the £50 billion cost of the project? Because I've yet to see anything that convinces me of that, and every single well, previous are. project has, has, has never, ever failed to live up to any of these expectations. Well, um, yes, I am. I mean, the, 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 studies, the studies speak for themselves. There are uh, well-respected um, uh, studies out there, including by KPMG, that demonstrate that the uh, benefits the project will bring will be at least twice the cost of the project. These um, are the same. These would be the same sort of same sort of reports that predicted exactly the same for the Channel Tunnel, which lost billions. Well, um, since then, methodology has increased uh, a lot and come on, and I think that actually uh, uh, no one is um, disputing these basic um, assessments. Um, but you know, it, I think it, they are. it's not all about. It's not, all, it's not all about speed either. I think that um, uh, what you ignore is that, uh, you know, the railways are filling up. Um, Sir David Higgins says in his report that uh, journeys have, have, have massively increased in the last 20 years. They've doubled. Um, and, you know, the West Coast Main Line will be full by 2025 or 2026. So it's not about speed. never has been. Um, Drank Dobson, let, let's come to you. Uh, it's not about speed. It never has been. In fact, we can get to Birmingham half an hour earlier or, or, or whatever. That's not the issue. It's about sort of putting on more trains. It's about a 21st century infrastructure. Is he right? Well, I mean, <clears throat> one of the problems is that those people who are in favour of uh, HS2 have uh, kept changing what the objective is as each uh, previous objective has been kicked to bits by people who know what they're talking about. And uh, certainly the, the interesting thing is the Heans report uh, shows that certainly in relation to my constituency of Hoban and St Pancras, the proposals that are in the present 
parliamentary bill a total rubbish because he says abandon the madcap scheme to smash through Camden Town to uh, build a link between HS2 and HS1 and he also says that the present proposals for Euston are crackers. Which is so, a fairly big criticism. I'm so glad you said crackers. I thought it was going to go horribly wrong there, Frank. Um, this, this is this is one of the issues, isn't it? Is that we have we look we one of the problems we have in this country, strangely, and it's the same issue with the London Tube as well, and with lots of our infrastructure, is that we we were among the first in the world to build this sort of infrastructure. Uh, we we have Victorian railways, and therefore you know we can't do what say Russia does and just build thousands of miles of of, of railway across open land with no complaints uh, that are totally new. We are stuck with old. But is there not a strong case, Frank? That um now, my understanding from many business sort of organisations uh, in Midlands and the north of this country is uh, that actually what they desperately want is not to get to London quicker, uh, they want to be able to get between Leeds yeah, and yeah, Manchester all, quicker. All and the evidence around the world is that if you build high-speed trains which run to the capital or the economic capital, then the tra- that place will benefit most and the other places may benefit a little but I mean if you think it, it's 50 billion pounds get 50 billion pounds in perspective that is more than we spend on our school's education system every year 50 billion and it's supposedly to the, the, the argument now that we're getting is it will benefit the northern the Midlands and the northern cities there are five of them Birmingham Nottingham Sheffield, Leeds and Manchester. If you divided the 50 billion up into five lumps of 10 billion and said to the people in those cities, you can have this money to promote your economic development, I don't think it'd be very likely that the first thing they'd come up with was, let's club together to buy a high-speed railway line. <laughs> and let's come back to you, Robbie Owen. Look, the reality is that an awful lot of, uh, of people uh, who, who are supposedly going to be the most benefiting from us, again, in, the, in, the, in the, the many towns and cities that Frank Dobson's talking about, uh, they, would, they, want, uh, they want better rail links and better public transport transport links, but they could be caught, but bought at a, fra- I mean, a tiny fraction of the cost. What about, for instance, just things like crossrail links uh, for those, those, those cities, but also lengthening platforms, lengthening trains so we can have longer trains carrying more passengers? That wouldn't cost £50 well, billion, pounds, would it? Well, I think, I think they need all of that, but also a better link to London. If you look at the um, report today, um, uh, Sir David Higgins uh, demonstrates that only six FTSE 100 companies with their headquarters um, uh, north of a line um, from from Birmingham to Cambridge, and that is a staggering statistic. And also, you know, well, why? Why is, why is that? Why is that? Why is that a staggering statistic? Well, because it demonstrates that uh, these big international companies find it very important to be. Um, close to London because that's where the, re- the reliable transport links are. No, um, that's not, no, yeah, they, the they're the in London because London's the capital city and also the, the financial si- uh, capital well, of our country. They, no, but, not, no, but you're, not, you're making up, you're, you're entirely concocting a reason. You know perfectly well why their companies are there. 